Have you ever seen one of these electron carburetors on somebody's bike and thought to yourself, I wonder if that would be a good carb for my Harley Davidson? I'm gonna be installing this Lectron HD series carburetor on my Evo Fatboy to see how it compares to the famous SNS Super E. You might be wondering, how does a guy like me come to get his hands on not one, not two, but three Lectron carburetors. Well, I'm a big YouTube guy now, so naturally I reached out to my buddies over at Lectron and said, hey, I don't see a lot of reviews of your products. Would you like me to make one showing people how they work on a Harley Davidson? And they said, no. <laughs> Old Grease's garage just ain't big enough yet to play with the big dogs, but we will get there. So you might be wondering, how did this video come to be? And it is all thanks to my buddy, Mikey Vaselli. All the carburetors you see here on this bench before me belong to Mikey. He was kind enough to send these over to me so that I could do a full review on them. So huge shout out to Mikey for making this video possible. The other benefit to these carbs coming from Mikey as opposed to Electron is I have no affiliation with Electron. If I like the carburetors, I will tell you. If I don't like the carburetors, I will tell you that too. 100% honest review of the Electron carburetor for a Harley Davidson application. I'm Grease, you're watching Grease's Garage and I'm gonna help you skip the struggle. All of the carburetor videos on my channel thus far have been about the SNS Super E, and this carburetor right here actually has all the same adjustments that the Super E does, but they're just adjusted in a different way. Let's talk about what's the same. Over here on the carburetor, which is the right-hand side of the carburetor, this is the carb facing you as it would if it were sitting on the bike. So on the right-hand side of the carburetor, this screw right here, this flathead adjuster screw, this is your idle speed screw. As you turn this screw in or out, it's gonna lift up the slide, either up or down, to raise your idle speed or lower your idle speed. So this is exactly the same as it would be on the Super E. Similarly, you've also got a fuel mixture screw, which in this case is on the left-hand side of the carburetor. You can see it sticking way out here. Turn this sideways so you can see that. So this screw right here, think of this for you SNS guys and for you Makuni guys as your intermediate jet. Now, famously, Lectron is all about the fact that you don't have to change jets because the carburetor doesn't have jets, so to speak, and that is correct. So instead of changing to a smaller intermediate jet or a larger intermediate jet, what you do is you twist this screw right here. This controls from about half throttle down to no throttle, AKA idle. So if you're not getting enough fuel at idle, or at the low end of your throttle, you would twist this screw out. Now, right up here at the top of the carburetor, you can see we've got another screw. And this one is what they call their power jet screw. For all intents and purposes, this is your main jet adjustment. Intermediate adjustment on the side, main jet adjustment on the top. Again, you don't need to actually swap out a jet to richen up your mixture. You just twist this screw right here out and that lets more fuel into your carb from about half throttle all the way up to full throttle. I am very excited to see if this works the way it is promised. In this video, the way I'm going to show you this carburetor is the way that Lectron advertises these carburetors, which is to bolt it onto your bike and go. Most of the time they say no adjustments are needed beyond setting your idle speed. One helpful thing about the Lectron carburetor is it has this choke knob right here, which is really handy because we all know what a choke means, but if you ever say choke about a super E carb, people go, excuse me, it's actually an enricher. It's so annoying. Everybody knows that we mean choke. It's the same exact thing. Fortunately on the Lectron, it actually says choke, so you can say choke like you want to. At the bottom of the carb, you can see we've got four screws that hold on the float bowl. There are no jets underneath this float bowl. So again, in the beginning here, I'm not going to be popping this off, but I will do a future video where I disassemble the carb entirely and show you how everything works on the inside. And last but not least, this is the rear of the carburetor as it attaches to the motorcycle over here. I've got the flange gasket off of my SNS Super E carb, and you can see it fits right onto the back of this Lectron. So hopefully all I will have to do when I go to install this on the bike is take my Super E off, pop the Lectron on, hook up the throttle cable, and I'm good to go. 
Another thing to note about this carburetor that you won't have to worry about because I do believe it comes with one is as you can see here, there are no screws on this portion of the carburetor that would allow you to attach an air cleaner. Electron makes a piece that clamps over this and has the cutouts for the screw holes. It takes the same screw pattern as the SNS Super E. So if you have a velocity stack you want to throw on there or a carburetor that's specific to your SNS Super E's, you can bolt those directly onto this. I actually don't have that part, so I'm going to have to run mine wide open for the sake of this test. So we'll see how this thing does. But just so you know, if you already have an air filter, you won't have to throw it away. You can reuse it on your electron. All right, guys, so I got you brought in on the flange right here. This is the SNS manifold I had for my Super E. Should work just fine with this carb as well. We're gonna take our flange gasket. You can see it's got an O-ring on this side. You want that to face toward the flange itself. So let me go ahead and pop this on, push the bolts through, and now we're ready to add the carb. All right, guys, this is a step people always forget when they're installing carburetors. Don't forget, when you put this carb on, you're going to need to attach the fuel line. So the first thing you want to do is take your carburetor, which in this case, let me show you right here, this little barb right here, this is the, the front of the carb, this is the left-hand side, this little barb is your fuel inlet. So we're going to take our fuel line plug that onto our carburetor. Then I'm gonna take my throttle cable, route that up through the bars in the proper direction. Then we can go ahead, slide the actual carburetor on, put the bolts through here and here, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all hooked up. Okay guys, so we got the carburetor mounted on the bike, but I wanted to point out one thing that you might notice right off the bat, and that's that the fuel inlet on the Electron actually points upward, as opposed to the Super E, which points through the two cylinders. So this actually means that, well, at least with, with my setup, coming from the left-hand side, the petcock is over here in the top left corner of your screen. So I actually have to route this now up over here, and it puts this uh, kind of an extreme angle in the fuel line. So I don't know if that's going to feed properly. We're going to test it out and see if it does. It could be rectified by cutting the cable down, but this is my, um, excuse me, cutting the fuel line down but this is my fuel line, which works perfect for the Super E. So we'll see how it goes, but it's just something I wanted to mention. As far as tightening the screws to the carburetor on the other side, I use just a, uh, a regular ratchet with a long extension. It's like a 10 inch extension. And then I got my Allen socket on here. So we're just gonna reach on through the cylinders here, try to get around that fuel line as best we can. Like I said, that fuel line does get in the way a little bit and just snug that down up top, come down to the bottom one, and snug that up. There we go, carburetor's mounted. I wanna bring you guys in closer to show you what I showed you earlier about this ferrule end being smaller than the standard Harley style, which looks more like this. It's like a, uh, a larger barrel that you're used to seeing. This is just a little adapter, and basically what this does is it slips right over this piece, See if I can show you this here. Slips over this piece just like that and stays connected so that you can then insert this into your throttle housing. So we're gonna do that now. Just brought you guys in close to show you what it looks like when it's installed. Again, this is that larger barrel style ferrule on that adapter. If I pull it to the center, you can see that's the cutout right there. And that whole piece just rotates and takes up all the space in the throttle. And then this part right here, will open and close your carb. There she is guys, all mounted up on the bike. Super easy install, really, just like the Super E was. You got two bolts in the back holding it on, and then you've got your fuel line coming here, going to your petcock, and then I'll loosen this up so you can see here, we just got the cable going up to the throttle. That's it. Pretty straightforward as far as getting it onto the bike. All right guys, first thing we're gonna do is reset this carb to its factory settings. This right here is our fuel screw. Factory setting on this is one and one eighth turns out from seated. So we're gonna go ahead and twist this all the way in till it lightly seats and then back it out one and one eighth turns. That's lightly seated right there. Come a half a turn, a whole turn, oops, a whole turn and then an eighth of a turn. Next is our power jet, which is right up here on the top. So we'll go ahead and turn this one to the factory setting of one turnout. There's a half, there's one, 
that's our factory setting. And last but not least, we've got our idle screw right here, which is two turns out. So we'll go ahead, that's a half, that's one, one and a half, and two turns out. We are all good on the factory settings. All right guys, so you can see down here in the mouth of the carb, this is wet right here. This actually has fuel in it. I was told, and I don't know for a fact that this is true, that these can sometimes have a difficult time on the first start because the float bowl might not fill. So all I did was I put my hand over it like this while kicking the kicker pedal, and that draws fuel into the bowl. We're gonna pull the enricher for the choke. Geez, now I'm so used to the S&S &S way. And we'll see if she comes to life. Wow, almost on the first kick, holy cow. All right, guys, it is day two, and we're back working on this Lectron. Had some issues yesterday with getting fuel into the carb, and I do think I solved that by switching the routing on that fuel line from coming over the manifold. I lengthened that line so I had the space I needed to come under the manifold. That made a difference. Now I can see fuel in the line. However, now that fuel is getting into the carb, it's pouring out of an overflow valve on the right-hand side. You can see this little brass valve right here. Every time I turn the fuel on, it just dumps out of that port. I'm assuming I have a stuck float somewhere, so I'm gonna take the bowl off. While I'm in there, I'll get a shot, show you what that looks like, and then we can figure out if we've got a stuck float valve, try to unstick it, put it back on, and see if she fires up. I do wanna mention that this is the way things go with bikes. I know on my channel you typically get to watch a job start, progress, and end, but this might be one of those videos where you don't have a resolution and it has to go into a part two. This is the way it goes. You can't let these kind of things frustrate you. You just gotta work through it and hope you find a result in the end. So let's get back at it. All right, guys, just wanna bring you in on this right here. So this is basically the bottom of the carburetor, right? You've got this little piece. This is your idle jet circuit here. And then this one is going to your main jet or what is essentially your, your main jet circuit up there. Underneath, you can see we've got the regular float assembly that you're used to, and I'm not able to see it uh, having any issues moving up and down. It looks like it's free floating. That's what it looks like on the inside there. Nothing that I can see that's causing that not to, uh, not to function the way it should, but maybe it was a little blocked up and now we freed it up. So what I'll do is put this back on, refill the bowl, and see if it continues to dump out of this little port right over here. All right guys, so I got the bowl back on now and I'm not seeing fuel just pouring back in here. I've got the petcock turned on as well, but I wanna show you this. If you put your hand over this mouth, right? And then you kick through, you can see right here, fuel is now coming into the carb. So if you have a kicker pedal, and you're trying to get fuel primed in here, and you can see it's also in the mouth, right? We've got fuel in here now. So that's all it takes, is to just give it a quick prime kick, and that seems to draw the fuel down into the float bowl. So after getting it to fire up for the first time, which is super exciting, the one thing I'm realizing is it seems like there's nothing I can do to the idle screw that affects the idle. 
it no matter how far in or out I turn that screw the bike is at a super super high idle it's blowing a ton of smoke out the back so the factory settings I'm not super impressed with uh, there maybe this has something to do with the metering rod I know it gets a little funky with the way that you can adjust these things but it will run it will work I'm just a little iffy on where I ought to be setting these factory settings I twisted that idle circuit as lean as it will go all the way seated and the bike is still running with a crazy high idle the smoke was still coming out the back of the pipes so some tweaking will need to be done but for the time being as far as an install that is how you install it on a uh, Evo fat boy it is a direct bolt-on but as far as the tuning goes, that's gonna be a part two. So if that's something you wanna see, you want more on these Electron carburetors, happy to shoot that video. I'll definitely have to call the people at Electron to understand how to get this dialed in, but it will work, it will run. That's your Electron HD in an HD application. Thanks for watching Grease's Garage, and I'll catch you guys next week.